The anti-gun cancer that hit Virginia is now making its way, it's spreading cell by cell into Kentucky. What am I talking about? You're going to want to hear the next episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your source for Second Amendment news. Saturday morning, more news coming uh, on the attack on our, our freedoms, our Second Amendment. And this time it's coming from Kentucky. A bill was uh, put forth this week to ban assault weapons and to ban any magazine over 10 rounds of capacity. Now the bill in question is Bill Request 354, filed by Jay Donahue. And this is a pre-filed bill for the 2020 session. I'll have a link in the description like I always do if you want to read it. I suggest you do if you are from Kentucky, uh, but I'll tell you about it in a nutshell. So what they want to do with this bill is they want to define what assault weapons are, and that's any rifle that can have a detachable magazine and uh, one or more of the following uh, uh, cosmetic features, telescoping, folding stock, uh, pistol grip, barrel shroud, which is a fore-end, etc. This bill also defines any high-capacity magazine as anything, whether it's a magazine, a drum, a stick, a tube, a belt, anything that holds more than 10 rounds of capacity. And it's the same cancer that's been spreading across the country for the last 20 years. It is now uh, taking another bite, another attempt to take a bite out of Kentucky. Now I'm gonna read you right from the bill so you know exactly what's going on. A couple of different sections that were being altered in different laws to change the definitions, but uh, this is what it says regarding the magazines. On or after the effective date of this section, a person is guilty of possession or transfer of a large capacity ammunition feeding device when he or she knowingly either A, possesses a large capacity magazine or feeding device, B, transfers the same, and then it tells you that possession is a class A misdemeanor, and there's no grandfather clause here. It says that any person who may not lawfully possess a large capacity ammunition feeding device on or after the effective date of this act shall, prior to the effective date, A, remove the large capacity ammunition feeding device from this state, B, render this large capacity magazine ammunition feeding device permanently inoperable, or C, uh, sell the large capacity ammunition feeding device to a federally licensed firearm dealer, or D, uh, give them to law enforcement. Then they go into the, the, the rifles. It says, a person is guilty of possessing or transferring an assault weapon when he or she knowingly either A, possesses the assault weapon, B, transfers the assault weapon to another person through any means and tells you possessing this assault weapon is a class A misdemeanor. And of course, both of these, the ammunition, uh, the magazine part and the rifle part have the typical uh, opt-outs for military law enforcement. And then it goes into the, what you have to do once this, if this is passed. Within one year of the effective date of this act, any person who lawfully owns an assault weapon as defined in the section one of this act on the effective date shall a. Register with the Department of Kentucky State Police as a certified owner of each assault weapon, and that person elects to continue to possess it, so you have to register your firearms. B. Store the weapon with the device that renders the weapon temporarily inoperable in accordance to the subsection of this section, trigger lock, etc. Or, you can transfer the assault weapon to any person lawfully entitled to own or possess that firearm. Or, you can transfer the assault weapon to the Department of Kentucky State Police buyback program in accordance with subsection and blah, 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 blah. And then you also have the option of rendering the assault weapon permanently inoperable. And I know what some people are thinking, well, if there's no firing pin, it's inoperable. They specifically go over that. In this bill, they say that it's uh, per not permanently inoperable if the owner still possesses the parts that could make it operable again. So if you have ARs, AKs, and you remove the firing pin, and you happen to have a bag of firing pins somewhere, it's technically not permanently inoperable, even if they're in different parts of the house. So Kentucky, a gun-friendly state, is now looking at an assault weapon ban and a magazine ban, dead in the eyes for the new session uh, to take place in January 2020. The bill, like I said, is Bill Request 354. Link will be in the description. And I'll also have a link to the guy who proposed this, Mr. Jay Donahue, uh, because uh, you might want to reach out to him and tell him what you think since he's supposed to represent you as a citizen. 
If you live in Kentucky, you know what you need to do already. If you don't live in Kentucky, you can help those in Kentucky. A, hit that thumbs up because it helps more people see the video here on YouTube. B, share it, spread it to groups, to, to forums, to people, whatever. If you help spread the news, more people are likely to get it. More people can take action and become aware of it because, like you saw in Virginia, they took advantage of certain people that, you know, don't go to the polls. They took advantage of certain people not knowing what's going on. And they're going to try that in Kentucky as well because it worked to their state next door. If you're into the Second Amendment news, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, this is where you're going to find it right here on Guns and Gadgets days before others put it out, if they put it out at all, to include the mainstream media. So do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Not only do you help yourself get that news in a timely fashion, you help this channel continue to grow, and that helps get the news out as well. Until we see each other again, I am Jared, your host of Guns and Gadgets. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. Take care, everybody.